Thank you, Daniela. Time now for the headliner brought to you by Miller Lite. And let's bring in former Tiger, the mayor of the world, I guess we could say, which we <laughs> need right now. And uh, also from the MLB network, uh, a jack of all trades. He's on so every time I tune into MLB, he's there. But of course, I'm talking about uh, Sean Casey. Sean, thanks for joining us on the headliner today. Really, really appreciate it. No, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Looking forward to it. You know, I, I want to talk to you. You're one of these special athletes, and it's probably more of a testament to your personality and just the person you are. But you're one of these gentlemen who came to the Tigers and bonded not only with that team, but with the city, kind of like you always had a Detroit Zolt, uh, soul. Why was it such an easy transition for you to come to Detroit? Oh, man, I, I tell you what, you know, I, I'm so thankful. I look back at my career, my time in Detroit. I don't know. It just, uh, you know, I, I, I feel like I fit right in right away. You know, Leland and all those guys embraced me, you know, all the guys on that team, you know, Inge and Vance Wilson and Mags and, and Carlos Guillen and, and uh, you know, Jason Grilly. There was Nate Robertson. So many great guys. Even yeah. Carl Anders from here brings back so many good memories. But I'll tell you what, it wasn't, it wasn't tough to have a connection with the fans, you know. When I got traded there, that city was going absolutely nuts for the Tigers, and I just felt so fortunate to be in that situation. You know, when you look at it, you, you mentioned Jim, Jim Leland. Uh, you know, he was always a Tiger. I can remember he was drafted by the Tigers. He was a catcher, spent a long time in the Pittsburgh organization, obviously. But when he came back to Detroit, what was it like to have him as a manager and play for him? Because he just seemed so – he seemed like he was, you know, his bark was worse than his bite, so to speak. Well, he was the best manager I ever played for. And, I, you know, I grew up in Pittsburgh, too. So, you know, he was like an idol to me. He was an icon to me. You know, Leland, all those guys. You know, when I came in, Leland and Lamont and Lloyd McClendon and Raphael Belliard, Donnie Slot was our hitting coach. Van, Andy Van Slyke was one of my, like, idols of all time. So he was the first base coach. But Jimmy Leland was the best. I mean, he was just the best communicator. You know, you talk about – managing a clubhouse and managing a the team there was nobody better you know he was he was that you know he was like your dad you're kind of scared of him but you know what i mean you you respect him so much but you're a little scared of him and you kind of feel like he's your friend but he's not you know he, he was able to find to ride that fine line and uh you know i, I feel so fortunate i still see him a lot because we both live here in pittsburgh so i still talk to jimmy a lot and see him and uh just a, just i think a hall of fame manager and one of the greatest probably the greatest manager I ever played for. I, I want to, you know, I hate to keep jumping around because I can go on and on forever about, uh, about you and your career, but you're known as the mayor and you're one of these guys. I think every baseball fan, when they see somebody, when you're playing first base and I, I can remember the late great Norm Cash was kind of a character at first. And you're always talking to the, to the opposition. You're always talking to the player. I, I'm kind of wondering, is it, a, you know, because you're always thinking as a fan and you're watching that, what the heck is Sean Casey talking about? <laughs> you know, what's he talking I mean, do you have a book on these guys? Were you, were you trying to throw them off their game? Are you just nice? I mean, what, what are you asking? Nah, you know, I think if I'd have played center field, my career would have been over in a year. I'm like, I need that, I need that interaction. You know what I mean? I needed to have that, I needed to have that conversation. You know, what's great is baseball is such a small fraternity. You get to know all these guys over the years. So, you know, it was great for me. Like playing first base, I would have a chance you know, to really, you know, talk to guys. The only time that ever happened, my rookie year when I was in Cincinnati, I remember Henry Rodriguez gets on first base. And I don't know if you remember when he was in Montreal, he used to throw O. Henry bars on, onto the field. And, oh, yeah, I do yeah it. whenever he would home. And I remember Ron Ballone was on the mound and he was a lefty. And I had just been, I was my third week in the big leagues. And I remember uh, Henry Rodriguez singles, he gets to first base and I was, he gets his lead. And I'm like, oh man, I'm like, hey, it's so nice to meet you. I, I was, you know, so, so raw at that time. And I was like, that's really cool when they uh, – when in, in Montreal, when you hit a home run and they send those old Henry bars onto the field. And he turned to me when I said that to say thank you. And right when he turned, Ron Ballone stepped off and picked over. And I caught the ball and I was like, oh, my God, man, I'm so sorry. Like, I, I didn't mean to, like, distract you. But, like, I, you know, I didn't know what to do. So I was like, you're out, you know. But I was like, oh. That was the only time I'd ever distracted somebody. It was really, un you know, unintentional. <laughs> Well, so, so you, never, you never use it as competitive advantage to throw a guy off. Only that one time. Just that one time, and I wasn't even doing that. Yeah, so I, 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 I tread, I treaded very lightly as far as that went. You know, Sean, uh, we're obviously in unprecedented time, and you know, I, every day I turn around, I'm trying to wonder when sports is going to come back. You know, once baseball does come back, I think Tiger fans are pretty eager 
to see this club a little bit. Some of the additions that they made with, uh, you know, Cameron Maven's back for the for the third time. Ivan Nova is going to be on the mound. Uh, Jonathan Scope and C.J. Chrome, who are power hitters. They certainly look like they're going to be uh, a better and more competitive club this year. Well, I, I think Scope's got a lot left in the tank. You know, Nova on the mound. We'll see. Cameron Maven, man, I, I was, I was, you know, Maven came up in 06. I think he went, was it 06 or 07 when he went deep off Clemens in New York for his right. first for a first home run. I mean, that was unbelievable. I'm, I'm glad to see him back there, uh, you know, in Detroit. I, you know, I think, I think Detroit right now is just, you know, kind of in that uh, rebuilding mode. And I, and I think they're, you know, I, I think there is definitely some excitement with some of the people that they've signed, Crone being one of them with a big power bat. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see, you know, how they are. But I, you know, for me, I, I, I'd love to see, you know, the, the Tigers get back and, 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 and to, to compete in the, in the central there to try and get back and win that division. If Michael Fulmer is able to come back from Tommy John surgery, and depending on when the season starts, he could actually be ready to go if it starts in the middle of July or so. But if you look at, at the lineup with Matt Boyd and Zimmerman and Nova, as we talked about, you add in Fulmer, uh, you know, Spencer Turnbull, actually their starting rotation looks pretty good. Well, you want to see competitive baseball too, obviously, when you're, you know, you're a Tiger fan. Those fans are so passionate and they love, love that club so much. Yeah, I think Zimmerman's a big key, man. I just think he's been so, uh, you know, he's had a tough, tough go there in Detroit. I mean, man, but he still has great stuff. You'd love to see him have a, a career year. But Fulmer's a big key there, man. I mean, you know, this guy came onto the scene and really, really uh, showed us what he had. And, you know, he's been banged up. But, you know, if he came back and get back, could get back to the form that he was, you know, when he first came into the big leagues, you know, that's a huge – that's a big uh, boost for that staff. But the staff is pretty good, no doubt about it. You know, I don't know. If, I don't know if the, the team as a whole could get to you know the top of the division this year. But you're right. I think they're headed in the right direction. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of funny because the bullpen always seems to be a question with Detroit. No matter if the team is you know elite level or whether they're rebuilding or somewhere in between, uh, is that just the nature of the bullpen? I mean, you know, I I, I know that we we you know we sort of get swirled with some aces, but overall, boy. I will tell you, if, if, if I – and all the time, and I've always dreamt about being a professional athlete, the one position I would never want to be is a relief pitcher. I mean, yeah. that, that is just some, sometimes a thankless job. Yeah, I look back at that bullpen, too, that we had no six. I mean, with Zumaya and Rodney and Grilly and Todd Jones, I mean, we were, lo we were absolutely right. loaded. You know, that's right. why I look back. But you know, the bullpen is such a wild card. You even go back to, you know, a few years back when they were in the World Series with that rotation was – with Scherzer in there and Verlander, and they had some, they had some absolute studs. Uh, and I, you know, I, I think the bullpen sometimes is the toughest part to piece together. So, you know, uh, yeah, especially with a team like Detroit, man, if they could figure out a way to piece together a good bullpen, you could definitely win some games with the guys out there. The middle of that lineup with Scope and Crone, I mean, they, they're going to hit some. They're going to hit some home runs this year, and power was a big question mark for the Tigers last year. Well, I think they knew they had. You know, you, you got to have some boppers in that park. When you got Scope and Crone to go along with Miggy, I mean, hopefully Miggy comes back and finds his power stroke. You know, uh, I think that's a big factor and, and gets in a little bit of better shape. But when you add Scope and Crone, I mean, you're adding some thunder. And, and, and I tell you what, when you play at Comerica Park, you got to be able to bang because, it, you know, you got to have some guys that can really hit it out of the park. Those are two great additions in the middle of that lineup. When you look at some of the young prospects, one of the guys that I'm really, really intrigued by, and he had a good spring, very, very young. The number one pick last year is a guy like Riley Green. The Tigers can catch a break on, uh, uh, on, on Riley Green. You know, suddenly that makes the, the rebuild accelerated even more, I would imagine. Oh, no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, I think with Riley Green, you know, I think he's, he's got a big-time potential to be a big-time big leaguer. And, and, you know, when you're a team like Detroit right now that has to hit on the draft, you know, when you look at a guy like Riley Green, this kid's pretty special and uh, has a chance to, to do some big things in the show. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing Riley Green. Uh, I, I think that uh, he's going to be a Tiger for, for a long, long time. A couple of other guys, look at the young arms that they have in the system. Casey Mize, Matt Manning, Tarek Schoolbrill. I, I, you know, the Tigers actually have a semblance and a core, I think, of good young arms, some nice young prospects that uh, can make this team uh, at least enjoyable and competitive to watch. Well, Casey Mize, I mean, man, he's got some great stuff. And, I, you know, I think that, you know, I think they've done a great job of drafting arms. And at the end of the day, in the big leagues, 
you know, uh, you win with big arms. And, uh, you know, we saw with Dombrowski what he brought, you know, big power arms. And I think, you know, Al is kind of doing that too, uh, getting those getting those guys. Uh, but I also, like I said, I, I talked when we talked about before, Riley Green, that's a frontline middle of the order bat that they definitely need too. All right. When, you know, they have the number one pick. And I, I guess Spencer Torkelson, big hitting first baseman, uh, from Arizona State or Austin uh, Austin Martin, the third baseman from uh, uh, from Vanderbilt. But I look at Torkelson, and, and, and you know, and I know I wonder if he's related to the legendary monkey Peter Tork because uh, <laughs> his real name was Torkelson. I'm going to say that all the time. And if the Tigers, he's going to be at nauseum if the Tigers ever draft him. But where do you think they'll go with the first round pick? I mean, they you know obviously power big hitting first baseman, and Torkelson's numbers are astounding. I mean, for and yeah. the, he's at to be pitting the ball like he is but then again Austin Martin is is not shabby either yeah I don't really know where they're gonna go you know they'll, they'll go with probably the best player you know at their at their pick and uh but I'm not really sure where they're gonna go but I, I tell you what I mean for me I love I love uh I'd, I'd love another big bat I mean you know what I mean I think I think when you look at that lineup when they signed Scope and they signed Crone and and Mickey's on the back end of his career you, you know you you, you put, put a guy like Riley Green in the middle of that order Maybe another big bat would be good for him. Yeah, I I know we talked about Jim Leland, but uh, Ron Gardenhire, the Tigers uh, skipper here, in a strange sense, I know they're different personalities, but when I've talked to Leland over the years and when I've talked to Gardenhire, and I talk to him a lot, especially when he was with the Twins too, they seem to be similar as far as they're professionals. They know what it takes to win, and they treat you guys fairly and like men, even though – I know you might be a little bit apprehensive and treat him like like your dad, but uh, but right. Ron Gardenhire seems to be the right guy right now for the Tigers. Oh, Gardy's the best man. I love Ron Gardenhire. Gardy's just you know, players have always respected Gardy and, and what he does and and the, and the guy that he is. So uh, I think they have the right guy there in Detroit for what they're trying to do, and I think Gardy's always been great too with some of the young players, and he's he's a you know he's he's always has the respect of the veteran players. So yeah, Gardy's no doubt the right there right guy there in Detroit. I, I'm kind of uh, curious when, you know, Major League Baseball Network, MLB Network, you're on all the time. I mean, you must be, if you can't be playing baseball, I guess what you're doing right now has got to be the second best thing. Oh, it really is. You know, it's such a great transition for me from from playing to, uh, you know, to, to going to MLB Network because it's, it's allowed me to stay in the game. It's my 12th year doing it, which is amazing. I can't believe it. <laughs> but it's allowed me to stay in the game. I, I love baseball so much. And I don't have the stress of having to strike out in a big situation because I'm just talking baseball. So, <laughs> so it, makes it, it makes it a lot easier. <laughs> I know, you know, I know what you mean. I, yeah, I, my, my whole career has been just talking for a living and talking <laughs> sports, you know. I mean, yeah. like, we're right in the same camp on that way. You know, another thing, too, I just want to tell you, one of my all-time favorite collegiate nicknames, Richmond Spiders. Oh, yeah. You, you got to love yeah. it. I got, yeah. I got well, I always tell everybody, don't get caught in the web, baby, because we're spinning, uh, we're spinning webs nationwide. You know, I, we always, we always said that joke around about Richmond. You know, because everybody, like, where'd you go? I was like, Richmond Spiders, University of Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I, I'm a big Spiders fan, so uh, you know, Sean, Sean Casey, it's great. I'm glad that we caught you in our web here today on the uh, on the headliner. Uh, best of luck to you. Uh, as I said, I, I know that uh, you know, born in New Jersey, grew up in Pittsburgh. But, buddy, you have a Detroit soul. I, I, I'm really – you really, really do. Thank you for joining us today on the headliner. I really appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate it. I just want to say I, I, I love my time in Detroit so much. And those fans were wonderful. And I just – like I said, the memories I have in my career, my time in Detroit were some of the best. All right, Sean. You take care. We'll talk to you real, real soon. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. I want to thank Sean Casey again on the headliner, brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer with great taste and only 96 calories. And it's also available for a delivery. Uh, back to Daniela.